For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney here with Todd Schleckaway, the president of the National Association of Tower Erectors. And we're at Mobile World Congress Americas in San Francisco. Man, I've seen a lot of action around drones at the show so far, and I know that Nate has even set up a committee that specifically speaks to this. Can you tell us a little bit more about that, Todd? Sure, Sean. Yeah, Nate, uh, several years ago, started an unmanned aerial systems committee, and it's really, we were one of the pioneers in terms of UAS drone integration into the wireless and wireless infrastructure industry. And from Nate's vantage points, uh, we see a lot of value both from an, a safety perspective and an efficiency perspective in getting UAS adoption to the marketplace. Um, obviously, there's a lot of risk mitigation that can go on. If you can prevent uh, a tower technician from having to go up and down a tower a couple times less per day, I mean, there's huge uh, safety value in that, not to mention the efficiency of work that goes on at tower sites. So we've really put together a strong committee. We have a representative from Verizon Wireless, AT&T, Crown Castle, companies that all of your, your readers obviously know. And then we have uh, some UAS service provider companies on, on the committee. And then our contractor member representatives are all licensed pilots. So they come with a knowledge of our industry, of what it's like to build towers, boots on the ground, and also with an aviation background on top of it. So safety is obviously top of mind when you're deploying these unmanned aerial systems uh, in a tower scenario, mm -hmm. but can you elaborate a little bit more on how these are being used in the fields to yeah. drive safety? Sure, uh, you know, the use cases for UAS integration at tower sites seem to be expanding uh, rapidly. And you know, obviously the, the the one everyone thinks of first and foremost would be inspections, you know. A lot of the carriers require closeout video and photos uh, from the contractors anyway to prove that you perform the scope of work that you're required to do at that particular tower site. So obviously the, the capability of drones to go up and down and get video footage of closeout packages and inspections, uh, environmental species, are there any, you know, of you know, environmental issues on that tower before you commence work. But, you know, the use cases are really expanding. I mean, we're seeing companies who, you know, instead of sending someone on a tower site bid walk, you know, that the companies gather around a tower site to do a, a bid walk to see, okay, what are we gonna bid on this project? Well, drone footage is so clear now and sophisticated and comprehensive that you can prevent all the companies from having to dispatch someone to, to the tower site. Think of the time that's saving. So that would be an example of a use case. Uh, it, it's, just, it's just rapidly expanding. I mean, AT&T and Verizon are conducting work on using drones as LTE hotspots in, in natural disaster scenarios like we've recently experienced in this country with the hurricanes and then uh, music festivals, te teether drones act as L LTE hotspots in congested environments, and then not to mention artificial intelligence, the research that's going on there. So the bottom line is there's a home for drones in our industry, and, and we're seeing that play out every day. Well, and there are some regulatory implications yep. though, of putting a vehicle up in the air. So I know Nate is working with the FAA and some of the other yep. relevant bodies to really facilitate the commercial use. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, that's a good question, Sean. Obviously, as, as this technology explodes and gets to market in our industry, there's always regulations that, that come along with that. And so Nate is an active member of the Commercial Drone Alliance, and that has really opened up some doors for us uh, to interface with the FAA and other regulatory agencies. And uh, our committee actually came out with the best practices resource to educate our industry on what are the current regulatory uh, restrictions when it comes to UAS operations and uh, what you can and can't do. And so it's very important for us to educate our workforce on you know, if you're going to use these, here are the airspace restrictions, here are the operational restrictions, you have to go get your, your Part 107 license uh, to operate under the FAA uh, now. So uh, we're working hard to make sure our workforce is educated so that 
this technology can continue to be used and adopted on a more wider scale. And to that workforce education point, I think you guys have even recently produced a video around yeah. UAS. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how uh, people can find it? Yeah, thank you, Sean, for pointing that out. Nate has a Climber Connection video series that's really aimed at educating the, the workforce on all the issues that go on at a tower site. And one of the most popular ones we've released to date is the UAS operations video. We had some cool aerial views of 2,000 foot broadcast structures, some unique cell towers, but uh, you can find that video for all of you listening on Nate's YouTube channel, and it's a UAS operations video. We got it out on social media shortly after its release, and it really kind of took off and, and went viral. So we were very pleased, and, and uh, it's cool because I always say that uh, we have a really cool industry to promote because we have the, the view from the tower is the office. And um, when you add drone footage on top of that, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't get any more epic than that. So it was a fun video to do. Well, I look forward to taking a look at that, Todd, and I really appreciate you keeping us up to date on how Nate is really keeping up with these dynamic movements that we're seeing in the wireless industry. Thank you, and we appreciate, Sean, RCR Wireless for your coverage of all the diverse aspects of this industry.